think... Put down the planes. Now that we actually can do this, I didn't think we were actually going to do this. We could actually hard cast this for full price. Overlord of the Mistmoors. And we get to make two insect flying creature tokens. All right. Now who has the board state opponent? <laughs> so I'm actually pretty happy about it. Lightning bolt torpedo. Oh. Do they actually have the other one? Oh, they don't. All right. We did it. You guys get your last land opponent. We swing here. Oh, you know what? Sure. Let's play the other one. All three overlords are here to play, everybody. <laughs> That was so unnecessary. Here we go. Big swing. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Burn them out. Tokens. Yes. Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, we're going to be jumping back into the timeless format since it's been a while to revitalize a deck that we played last year, utilizing some of the brand new cards from Duskmorn. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's reanimate something from the past in a deck that I am simply calling today Overlord Reanimator. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content. You can support me monthly for a small amount on Patreon, where I have all of my extended bonus footage posted. We also have a Redbubble spot where you can buy merch like stickers and shirts, or for free, all you can just do also is just join our growing community on Discord. Your support helps keep this channel going. All links are in the details below. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So our Overlord Reanimator deck is a Mardu deck, although technically it's mostly white and black, but we are splashing for red, so we'll just count it as such. You're looking at an average mana curve about 4.0. That is high, but it's actually not as high as you think it is, and I'll explain why later on. You're going to be playing with 17 creatures, 4 incidents, 15 sorceries, 9 enchantments, and 24 lands. Simply put, we're looking at trying to then bring in from Duskmorn here any one of our three major overlords, whether it's the Boiler Bilges just to do a bunch of direct damage, we can use the Mistmores to then go wide and go big, or the Overlord just to help mill some stuff into the graveyard and then hopefully reanimate later on. How exactly can we pull this off despite the fact that the Overlords are so expensive? Good question. Well, I'm glad you asked. So let's show you how we're going to cheat these cards into play. Starting in the two drop with the creatures first, we'll have Raffine's Informant here. It only just does the connive when it enters, but that's all we needed to do. In other words, we then draw a card and we discard a card. Ideally, you're going to want to discard any one of your overlords that you can't cast immediately, and hopefully we can reanimate it a little bit later in the game. The other card that's not an Overlord is going to be Troll Kavazan Dumb. So we played this card last year a little bit, and I actually love what this card can do. It is a 6-5 and it's 6 mana. However, you usually don't want to cast it for a full price here. It can't be blocked except by three or more creatures, which makes it a really alternative great target just to finish off our opponent if they try to go wide. But you ideally want to utilize this for the Swamp Cycling ability. By Swamp Cycling, this way you'll then specifically pull out a Swamp. And what's great about that is it doesn't actually have to be a basic Swamp. So we can then utilize this to bring out some Sunlit Marshes here or Geo thermal bogs just to again get ahead on our mana and make sure we fix what we need. Of course the stars of the show are the overlords themselves so we have overlord of the mismores here, overlord of the boiler bilges, and overlord of the bailmerk. Each and one of these has the impending mechanic so which allows you to bring them in for a cheaper cost. Bailmerk here has impending of two and it has five time counters on it. Overlord of the Boiler Builders is 4 mana, but it has impending 4, and Overlord of the Mistmores here also has 4 mana and impending 4. What does this all mean? What this basically means is each one of these can be cast for the cheaper cost, however they will come in as enchantments, not enchantment creatures, until all the time counters are removed. Each one of the Overlords does provide their own utility, which we will take full advantage of. So to start, Overlord of the Bailmark specifically is a 5 mana 5-5 five five if you want to hard cast it, and if when it does enter or attacks, you mill 4 cards and you may return a non-Avatar creature card or Planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. Realistically though, there's only two targets for that ability, which is going to be the Troll, or it's going to be Raffine's Informant. But that's actually not bad, because say you can bring back the Troll and then keep Swamp Cycling it to make sure you get all of your land drops and never miss a beat. Our second Lord, however, is going to be a little bit more direct, and that is going to be Overlord of the Boiler Bilges here. So if you want to hard cast this, this will be a 5-5 for 6 mana, and when it does enter or attacks, it'll deal 4 damage to any target. So you can burn out whatever you need to just to help close out the game a little faster or just get pesky creatures out of your way. 
And then finally, the last but not least is Overlord of the Mistmoors here. So if you want to hard cast this, this will cost you 7 mana. However, when it enters or attacks, you get to create 2 2-1 two, white insect creature tokens with flying. This of course will help you just go super wide if you just want to overwhelm your opponent with value. Circling back over to the non-creature spells, we'll have in the one drop slot bone shards here. Having to pay the additional cost of discarding a card is actually in our favor because that's exactly what you want to do with this deck. In the two drop slot, you'll have Flicker of Fate here, so this will allow you to blink back any one of our creatures or enchantments to the battlefield immediately. This can help us again dodge some spot removal, or ideally, you can then maybe, say, flip your Overlord a little bit faster, just again to overwhelm your opponent and put a serious clock on them. If, however, you do have a board state that's getting a little too much for you, you can play in any point of the game Path of Peril here. For three mana, you can just blow up the whole board if, as long as they have mana value of two. If you need to blow up the whole board at any point in the game, our Path of Peril will be our ideal choice for a Wrath here. In the early game, you only have to pay 3 and you can destroy every creature with a mana value of 2 or less. However, if it is getting a little bit more too much... In the later part of the game, however, you can also pay the Cleave cost that's a little bit more expensive, but ideally it'll blow up the entire board. And then finally, all of our reanimation spells here. So we have four copies of Late to Dinner here, which allows us to bring back any one of our creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield, and we get to create a food token. Not until often that helps us out, but it can be useful for stabilization. But ideally, you want Unburial Rites here. It is five mana if you hard cast it at the start. However, it also has the flashback mechanic, allowing you to then cast it from your graveyard for only four mana instead. Since we pretty much spent all of our rares and mythics on the main deck and the creatures here, your land base is going to be as cheap as we can. So we're going to be rocking on planes, some swamps, we have Sunlit Marsh here, and Geothermal Box. Specifically, these two can be pulled out with the Swamp Cycling ability of the Troll. And then finally, to round it out, Sacred Peaks. Even though you don't want to have to hard cast the Overlord of the Boil villages, just as a precaution here, we decided to throw in these tap lands, just in case you do end up having to hard cast them at any point in the game. If you are interested in taking this into best of three, here's my recommendations for you for the sideboard. You can utilize Duress here as your catch-all for, again, combo decks and control decks out there. Soul Guide Lantern will be great as your Arl Catch-all Graveyard Hate. Reprieve here is, again, to just kind of deal with counter spells since it's actually not a counter itself. It just allows you to bounce something back, and drawing a card is actually pretty nice. Artifact, Enchantment, and Planeswalker here was with Fracture here. And to round out our whole package, a Creature Wrath is going to be Arch Fiend of Sorrows, giving all of our opponent's creatures minus two, minus two until end of turn. What's even sweeter about this is you actually don't even spend a reanimation spell. You can even unearth it for only five mana, and it still gets even more value if you need it to be. Is it really possible to reanimate a bunch of these high-powered creatures on a budget in the most powerful format in arena so bold strategy cotton let's see if it pays off well there's only one way to find out so let's go ahead let's take this into timeless let's go ahead let's see if we can reanimate some of our overlords and see how well the deck does Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can we beat down our opponent by cheating in a bunch of overlords? Well, the good news is we have overlords where we don't have really a way to bring them back. However, we can't throw one into the yard with bone shards. We do have a wrath, so in case of things go really, really bad, we can at least utilize this. All right, putting it on the mountain. Okay, well, nothing from our opponent there, but I guess that's fine. Sacred Peaks, so tapped. The good news now is we also have another target for discarding, so that's actually great, and it helps us draw through our deck. Lightning Bolt, okay. Lightning Bolt to the face is fine. I'm surprised I actually did that. I would have probably saved it in case if we played something, but okay. You do you, opponent. Shockland, Amp Raptor, okay. So they are an energy deck. Hmm, let's see. Will they get value here? They will get a Territorial Kavu. That's a little annoying, but that's fine. Okay, so how do we get out of this? Um, I guess we're gonna have to do it this way. Raffine's Informant. Draw through our deck. Okay, so we did get another Swamp, which is great. We pump up our Ravine's Informant. So if we have to, next turn, we can Path of Peril just to clean out the board and buy us time. That's mostly what we're going to need to do here. Shockland. Okay. Well, now they're pow powering up that Kavu quite a bit here. Another Territorial Kavu. Oh boy. Well, that's fine. We can still block for now. So that's mostly what we're going to have to do here, just to kind of hedge our bets. If I were opponent, I'm pretty sure they would have just kept that Lightning Bolt by now, but that works in our favor. So we'll chump block here, go down to 15. If they don't have a counter spell in hand, this will be a pretty good turn here. So we can Wrath the board. Path of Peril. Nice. Got you, opponents. Whew. Okay, so that buys us time. That's good. If we can get one reanimation spell, we will be in business. Come on, deck. Just one reanimation spell is all we need. Oh, okay, so they're not really an actual, like, energy deck. They're a zoo deck. Interesting. That's kind of neat. So we're 
that. Bone shards here. Okay, so at this point, I guess we're gonna have to just... Okay. We will throw away a planes. Here's how we're gonna do this. So I think we're gonna have to put on secret peaks. A few moments later. I realize now I probably should have put in, so hopefully I didn't screw myself over here. Or hopefully we can get a reanimation spell. One or the other can just help us get back into this fight. Our opponent's almost out of cards, which is also in our favor as well. Okay, flooded strand. They crack it. They go down to 12. Okay. Big beef creature, and we are definitely on a clock now. Come on, deck. Reanimation spell. Any reanimation spell will help us out. No reanimation spell. All right. Well, okay. We have one turn to survive. That's all we have to do. Okay. Well, cycling's not bad. That's fine. I can take that. Another flood is ran. Okay. Well, they're definitely pumping up quite a bit here. They have all the basics in. All right. Watch your last card, opponent. Will you play it? They do not. Down to five. All right. Well, here we go. go. So crafting some format for later will be nice. But for now, Swamp. I realize now we can actually hard cast this, so might as well. Puts down a big threat against our opponent here. Uh, opponents. All right. Here we go. Take out their cat warrior. Whew. Nice. That was almost too close. Opponent's thinking, but while they're thinking, as you can see right here, we now have pretty much a really gnarly threat here with the boiler bilges. As long as we can keep swinging, we can take out most of their creatures, so this actually is really nice for us. So long as, again, they don't have any hard removal, we should be fine to close out the game very, very quickly here. Uh, opponents, are you there? Okay. They are there, it looks like, but okay. Two cards in hand. Down to one again. Oh, okay. Overlord of the Abyss is actually pretty nice, too. So, here's how we do this. Hit our opponent <laughs> for four. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Put that clock on that opponent there. Down to seven. Down to two. Almost there. Think. Put down the planes. Now that we actually can do this, I didn't think we were actually do this. We can actually hard cast this for full price. All right, nice. Unless our opponent has two whole burn spells in hand, I think we got a win here. Overlord of the Miss Moors. And we get to make two insect flying creature tokens. All right. Now who has the board state opponent? <laughs> All right. I love this deck so far. This is actually really sweet, even if we didn't really reanimate anything. So I'm actually pretty happy about it. Lightning bolt token. Oh. Do they actually have the other one? Oh, they don't. All right. We did it. We did it. Yes. You guys get your last land opponent. We swing here. Oh, you know what? Sure. Let's play the other one. All three overlords are here to play, everybody. <laughs> That was so unnecessary. I'll take that. Sure, why not? All right. Here we go. Big swing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Burn them out. Tokens. Yes. We actually got them. We had all three overlords on the field. Oh, man. Wow. What a win. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can we overrun our opponent by cheating in some big overlords? Well, the good news is we do have some big creatures. None of them are overlords, which is kind of awkward, but we also can reanimate them if we need to while also pulling out some extra lands. Should we keep this? This doesn't really help us with our game plan per se, but I think, I think we could get away with this. I know, I know. It seems a little awkward, but I think even with this awkward hand, we can still make it work. Okay, so here we go. Play a swamp and we'll pass. Let's see what our opponent's doing first before we start cycling. I just want to see again, what are we getting into? All right, mountain. Okay, well I guess we'll start the cycling process now. So what we're gonna pull out first, Sunlit Marsh. Oh, okay, so our overlord, our first one's there. So let's actually play that now. All right, mill some cards, mill, mill, mill. What's nice about this is we do get to pull back at least one extra trolls. Ooh, we also have an Umbero Rites. This is actually not too shabby at all. So this means also we can utilize our trolls here to then start pulling out even more lands, and we should be good to go for the next turn or so. Another mountain. Select charge. Okay, they're going to try to blitz us here quick. All right. Well, game on, opponent. Let's see if we can make this work then. So in that case, then, we'll put the planes down. We will... How do we do this here? I guess we'll just pass. So the impending is ticking down, but we can speed up the clock real quick if we just use Flicker of Fate. Uh, opponents, you there? Hello? Hello? Not sure where our opponent's at here. Another mountain. Don't want to swing opponent? I mean, okay, there we go. I 
configured, I'm like, they have to do something here. If we absolutely have to, as an emergency, we can also flicker a fate right now the slick shot show off just to slow them down if we absolutely have to it's not ideal but it can be done down to 13 all right so swamp cycling we will pull out a geothermal bog now we will then flicker a fate the overlord here so now <laughs> we got now a bb5 vibe okay not too shabby right we'll pull back another troll to keep pulling out more lands we need to Let's see, okay, so with that, I guess we don't have a choice. Geothermal walk there. Swing. More milling. Come on. Okay. Well, I guess we'll get the Raffines informants. Down to 15. And then we're gonna hold up Flicker of Fate here. So here's why I want to do this. As I mentioned earlier, if you're running into major problems, like say like your opponent's gonna go off real big with a huge creature here, which I'm gonna guess they're gonna try to do, we can flicker it back and make them kind of waste all of their spells all in one go, and hopefully that should at least give us more time to look for things. Seeker of the way. Okay. Well, interesting. So I think they're gonna try to get that lifelink. Ooh. Not what I was expecting from our opponent, but okay. All right, opponent is swinging now. Okay, it's only one point of damage, so we can definitely take that. So how do we do this here? I guess cycle away once again the troll. We're gonna keep using this to dig out land, so this is actually not too shabby for us. I guess we get another geothermal walk just in case. And then with that, we will flicker a fate one more time. Come on, Dag. Bring us one of our overlords into the yard. That's all I want. Oh, oh, okay, okay. There we go. Okay, we want our animate this. We'll bring back one of our trolls again. So here's how we do this here. Actually, hold on one second. Oh, I thought of an even evil, even more evil plan here. Okay, okay. So, okay. Hold on for a second, everybody. This is actually even better. <laughs> Path of Peril is so good and timeless. People are sleeping on this card. Y'all need to really start playing Path of Peril more. Maybe I'll make this, uh, I'll probably clip this into a short later on, but seriously, there's a reason why. There's so many low to the ground cards in this format, you can definitely use this like here and just blow away their whole board. <laughs> yes, all right. Cycle the troll again. We will pull out this time a swamp. All right, nice. Swing again, more milling. We actually don't really care about that much milling here. We'll get back, I guess we can Raffine's informant. Down to 10. Okay, opponent, well, you're down to four cards. <laughs> got, your whole board got blown up because you got too greedy there. I really didn't think they actually had a hand like this is very interesting um blitz deck but okay i mean i got nothing against them playing it this way it is more unique so i'll give them props for that Swing. all right down to nine okay well <laughs> opponent you had chances to to make a comeback here but i guess we're just gonna just beat them down here overlord of the build boils yes burn them down take out that storm seeker gone we're also gonna now just swing here more milling. That's totally fine. Uh, I guess we'll just bring out another troll just for value. Down to five. We will then... You know what? We'll just cycle it now. And then bring back another Sunlit Marsh. I mean, at this point, we don't really need to keep anything. So we're just going to... I don't know. I guess we'll just toss away a land. Probably throw away that Sunlit Marsh. We actually really don't need that. <laughs> Opponent, you're staring at lethal right now. Do you have any answers? Ooh, Okay. Opponent is not giving up, so I will give them credit. At the very least, they are trying to fight, so I'll give them that. Alright, make monk. That's kind of cute. Okay, so this is basically it, everybody. So Unbarrel writes one more time. Uh, this time, you know what? We'll bring in a Miss Morse. Yeah, so we got all of our overlords here. Aw, yeah. Raffine's informant just for extra value. Doesn't really matter. We're just going to throw away one of our extra swamps here. We swing. We then just smash away their cute little monk. Sorry, opponent. <laughs> and then we just do some damage. You know what? Don't forget it. We'll just go right now for the kill. All right. There you go, everybody. Overlords. Bringing them back. Reanimating them in Timeless on a budget. And we are just smashing through people. Yes, they're not the most meta of decks out here. But I will take a win. A win is a win. So, oh, I'm so I love this deck. It's so much fun. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Can we cheat out a bunch of overlords on a budget in a timeless? Well, the good news is we do have our reanimation spells, which is awesome. We have an overlord here to start milling, and we have, actually, we have three. That's actually really, really nice for us. So let's go ahead, let's keep this. Can we get there, though? 
We'll put down the Sunlit Marsh Cat. Because we don't really have a turn one play. This helps us out. Planes. Soul Warden. Alright. It's fine. We'll put down the Swamp. And we will put down... Actually, how do we do this here? Hmm. Maybe instead, let's put down the Raffines of Formant. I realize we could just do this. I guess our opponent will gain some life, which is annoying. But that's not a bad thing for us. We'll throw away the Overlord. Now we at least have a beefy blocker for a little bit. We have a Bone Shards also, which is great. Dahlia. Alright. Dahlia is annoying, but it's not the worst for us. Unburial Rites again. So, here's how we do this. We will discard an Unburial Rites. Take out Thalia. Go swinging here. We gotta keep that life total low. Down to 19. Castle Ardvale. A Johnny's Private. Alright. Well, it's this classic combo, so I've seen this many, many times. Ocelot Pride. Ooh boy. Opponent is gonna start going big and wide here. They make another token. Okay, well, our opponent is going to be very annoying here, but we're going to try to get around this. Tap land doesn't really help us, unfortunately, but okay. Next turn, for sure, we will have our Overlord, so that at least will give us a little bit of time. We really could use, though, a Boiler Bilge, though. Wow, we're actually getting beat by a Mono White deck like this? Well, this is actually kind of hilarious in its own weird way. If we could also get one of our Rats, that also would help us out, too. All right, opponent's got full ascension with the city's blessing. Wow, they're just going off. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh yeah, it's all coming together. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, okay. Oh, this is gonna be so good right here. Ah, I'm sorry, opponent. Your whole board's blown up. <laughs> yes. Woo, oh my goodness. I Wow, that was the top deck we definitely needed. Wow, we really slowed down our opponent there and that bought us all the time we need. So, okay, new game plan. This is a whole new game now, everybody. I was going to tick down here. We got a swamp. We will play the swamp, play unburial rights first, and we will get Overlord back. Mill, mill, mill. All right, so we'll get a troll. So we can now start pulling out more of our lands. That's actually really helpful for us. Guy of Souls. Brutal Cothon. Like, no god really wow they actually had an answer for us okay well okay, it's still not over yet but that's okay we still have time okay minus two we make another cat token and it gains life wow Rex. Feels, this feels more like something i would build honestly for a timeless actually that might not be a bad idea for the future so let's consider that i guess um, I guess at this point, late to dinner. Raffine's Informant. We'll draw a card, discard a card. Okay, so, uh, I guess we'll throw away the troll here. We will, I guess that Johnny's gotta go. We'll throw away a late to dinner. Don't want to do that ideally, but we don't have a choice here. So, next turn we can bring back the troll, and that'll at least slow our opponent down a ton. I don't think they have anything else in hand. Oh, they have another Ocelot right now. Boy. All right, maybe we should have gotten, I guess, the Brutal Cathar. So at least that would have given us a threat to deal with. Wow, they have another one too. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm in danger. All right, sure, opponents. Well, I guess it's not going to be the victory we're going to win here unless we get another Wrath. But we did a good job at least with trying to clear the board out once. But I mean, sometimes you're just going to have to run into games like this where you just can't really do much of anything. Oh, that was absolutely terrible. But hey, I mean, we got through at least one wave of them, but I mean, that's mono white for you. They go wide very quickly, and sometimes you just don't have what it takes. And there you have it, ready. So that was our Overlord Reanimator deck for Timeless. And you tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Would you play this deck in any way, shape, or form? Truth be told, I had a lot of fun doing this. It was actually quite hilarious. The fact that we actually got off our Overlords a lot easier than I thought. Now, having said that, yes, yes, I'm going to have to be honest with you. You honestly could just kind of strip away this main shell here of just 
all the overlords and put in whatever kind of cards you want to reanimate, but what fun would that be? I honestly just wanted to see how good these overlords are. And the major biggest advantage that the overlords have versus any other reanimation targets is these ones come in originally if you want to play the impending side, giving you at least a more flexible way to cast them if you are having trouble reanimating them. Having said that, of course, the biggest weakness of the deck is, of course, Graveyard Hate. If your opponent is packing Graveyard Hate, you're going to have a bad time. If you do like this deck and you want to take it to the next level, stick around for just a moment because if you've made it this far into the video, you are my true fiery friends. And for that, you're going to be able to see how you can take this deck to the next level and make it even more awesome than it currently is. Now, as far as upgrading the deck, here's mostly what I'm going to recommend. As you can kind of see right here, yes, you could just go the easy route of putting in, oh, I don't know, just the Atroxas and just kind of call it a day, but what fun would that be? Instead, we're going to keep those, of course, in the sideboard. And the main deck is mostly going to focus on the Duskmorn Mythics. So with that, you have Overlord of the Hauntwoods now coming in. A single copy of that. Overlord of the Flood Pits here. This gives you a lot more variety to give you a lot more options in your deck. And yes, we're going to throw in Valgavoth. Actually, I'm kind of working on a Valgavoth deck maybe for Halloween time, but we'll talk about that in the future, so stick around for that one. Otherwise, you'll kind of trim down a little bit of your other Overlords to make room for the new ones here. And to support all that, we'll keep, of course, the Path of Perils, the Flicker of Fates, just to make sure we can blink them from extra value. We're going to cut a couple of cards, such as your Raffine's Informant, and just put in straight out Faithless Looting. This is going to be a a little bit more aggressive and it is lower to the ground however keep in mind that you will need to fix your mana a little bit better in order to accommodate that we're also going to just throw in reanimate as well yes again this will do a lot of damage to us but if say like you can reanimate immediately a valgavoth that's basically lights out for your opponent and to ensure that you can get in a lot more of your overlords faster into the graveyard to reanimate we will have copies of buried alive here they can just dump them immediately into the graveyard for three mana and usually by turn four if at the very least you don't have a reanimate already in hand upgrading of course your mana base this is again where it's going to get very expensive but again if you want to go all out this is how you want to do it since we are in the timeless format take advantage of the fetch lands here so we'll put those in bloodstained miners arid mesas and marsh flats those are your essential ones as far as what you're going to be bringing back not only plains and swamps you also have some godless shrines here raffine's tower a couple of those a couple of sabine's triomes and of course the inatha triomes you'll have one of the other triomes each ideally you don't need to put in every single one it's mostly just going to be the ones that you can fetch with either swamps or islands so those are the ones you want to stick to when it comes to then that game plan if you do want to play this in historic however the only major difference of course is you'll need to just trim out of course the fetch lands just basically throw in a couple more triomes if you need to or at least a couple more basics just to kind of help round out your game plan there for the sideboard upgrades you're just going to kind of switch off to authority of the consoles here this again will slow down aggro decks out there and gain you some life to stabilize you'll have thought of course to replace the duresses as always you'll have leyline of the void here just again for graveyard hate and just immediately hose down enemy graveyard decks out there and if you do want to again give yourself some all alternate options when it comes to reanimating stuff say like you have your overlord and you just want to mill things you can use flage titan of fear and fighters fury here this is also great for stabilization because of the lightning helix effect it has and also for the fact that you can keep escaping it which gives you again an advantage of milling all those cards to get more value out of them you'll have a copy of sarah's emissary here this is going to shut down specific decks that maybe you have trouble with in the game two or game three and just make sure you have protection from those chosen card types again just to hose them and lock them out of the game and as i just mentioned earlier yes just might as well throw in a troxa if nothing else this will just help refuel your hand and it is incredibly powerful and with that all out of the way here are my final thoughts that i want to give on the deck overall there are many things that you can reanimate in the timeless format but what fun would it be as i mentioned many times already if we just stuck to the tried and true method that's kind of boring and that's not why you watch these videos you watch these videos because you want to see some fresh new ideas out there for decks so to put it another way if you're a fan of the overlords from Duskmorn. If you're a fan of reanimation decks in general, and if you're a fan of the timeless format where you want to put together some really fun and awesome decks for a lot less, then I would definitely say give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to just overwhelm your opponent with the value that the overlords bring, you're going to have a lot of fun doing so. You'll be very surprised at how it can pull it off, and you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play, in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!